all the viewers of Punta Cana Homes get ready. Today we are hosting a special guest. Her name is Maria. No, don't worry. It's no Maria the Hurricane, which already went away from the Dominican coast. Today we are talking with Maria Williams, one of the most respected real estate brokers from Relabel Realty in Punta Cana. Hi Maria, how do you feel with such a hurricane like name? Are there any correlations? <laughs> it's funny you ask that because I was very mad, very mad when I found out they named uh, this Hurricane Maria and in a hundred years it's only the third hurricane that's ever sideswiped the Punta Cana east coast of the Dominican Republic. So no, are there any correlations? The only correlation that I can think of is that it, I'm strong like a hurricane, very strong person. Oh. <laughs> but that's the only correlation, trust me. <laughs> I am Dominican and I can confirm the local people believe that our country was blessed by God. That is why many disasters do not affect it. Do you agree? Oh, that is, I totally agree with that. In fact, even before you said that, Anna, that has been one of my speeches that I tell my clients when they're considering buying property here. I tell them, I said, the locals believe that the East Coast, Punta Cana, is a special place that is blessed by God, that it's got the kiss of God. And uh, in fact, they believe that so much that they believe that God owns vacation property here on the East yeah. Coast. <laughs> Yes, it is true. So, so yes, uh, we, we do feel blessed. But there, there's also scientific reasons. I am a Christian myself, and I, I believe it wholeheartedly that if, if people come together and they pray, and, and, and they all come together and they believe through faith, Maria, especially the name Maria, yeah. probably said, I better not mess around with God's territory. So yeah. who knows, maybe uh, she did move. But there are scientific reasons why uh, the hurricanes don't really affect the east coast of the Dominican Republic, uh, Punta Cana specifically in Bavado. And that is because of a unique situation geographically. Because Punta Cana is on a sharp point, and Puerto Rico is only about 85 miles distance, their west coast from our east coast, when hurricanes are developing, what happens is they are attracted to landmass, but because of the atmospheric conditions, low pressures, high pressures, scientific reasons, hurricanes typically are going to start going north. They will sometimes go over Puerto Rico, but uh, unfortunate for Puerto Rico, very unfortunate. I have family in Puerto Rico, so very unfortunate. But, but what it does is it breaks down the size of the hurricane for one thing. And then those jet streams that are around that sharp point, they start pulling the hurricane from the north and the south away from the, the east coast of the Dominican Republic. Additionally, we have a protective coral reef around the whole coast of the Dominican Republic. So we don't have to worry about those storm surges, that water coming in and flooding the whole area because that protective coral reef is so strong that when it hits there, it really protects and keeps those water levels nice and low. So there's a lot of reasons why we believe that the east coast of the Dominican Republic, Punta Cana, is definitely blessed by God. Yeah. And, and God maybe put these geographic, atmospheric, and all these other conditions in there. So there's a scientific reason, but I agree with you, Anna. I think that it definitely, Punta Cana, is blessed by God. Seriously speaking, how can you estimate the damage to Punta Cana Resort and residential areas after Hurricane Maria? I know that you uh, manage many properties. Have they been affected by this natural disaster? According with some news programs, there is nothing left to seller manage here. That's a really good question, Anna. Yes, I would say that most of my emails that I've been answering have been from all those clients who have purchased properties from us and have put it into our rental program. And of course, they're somewhere else and they're very, very, very concerned about their properties and they should be concerned. So most of our time has been just assessing the properties and letting them know that your property is okay. So much so that I had to actually create a report, a news uh, report, because I couldn't keep typing the same thing over and over again. We had assessed all the properties and out of all 70 some properties that we manage, uh, there were only about four of them that actually had a little water that came in. So we were extremely impressed. As far as structural damage, none. 
no structural damage whatsoever. No roofs that came off, no fallen walls, nothing like that. Everything was fine. Just a little water came into some of the condos, which, you know, it's it's concrete construction. It's ceramic tile floors. So, you know, it just takes a cleanup crew to mop it up and get it out of there and everything's perfectly fine. It's important to understand that there's good construction and bad construction. Good construction is going to have a lot of rebar. It's going to have a lot of deep footings. It's going to have a lot of pylons. Um, these are really important because that's going to withstand. They're going to be hurricane proof. They're going to withstand the hurricane. Of course, we did have some damage here. I'm not trying to say we didn't, but those were some of the old places that were built by mom and pop here 25, 30 years ago before the government mandated codes. They maybe didn't have rebar in there. So, of course, those places were affected by the hurricane and uh, there was uh, actually quite a bit of damage to those places. They are right now in the process of being rebuilt and that's fine. They're building them back a little bit further from the beach, so that's good. It's actually going to give us some more beachfront. So, so yes, there is a big difference between uh, good construction and not so good construction or old construction. In fact, Anna, today I would like to take you to a construction site that's under construction oh, wow. and we can actually talk to somebody there, a structural engineer, who can explain a lot more technical things about things like hurricane proof. What does that mean, hurricane earthquake proof? which the Dominican Republic is. Our construction is mandated by the government to be hurricane and earthquake proof. So we're gonna go there, we're gonna talk to him, and he's gonna explain in more detail, technically speaking, yeah. why <laughs> we don't have any structural damage here. Of course, so follow us and don't move. We are here at Playa Corral, one of Novell's uh, prime properties right here on the ocean. Absolutely beautiful view all the way around us and it is well under construction. In fact, I believe it's going to be finished around June of 2018. We've sold a few properties in here. Uh, it, it is nine buildings, consists of nine buildings with 72 units. One bedroom, two bedroom, three bedrooms, all different floor plans. Unfortunately, guys, uh, you're probably too late. Unless you buy within the next week or two, there's only four units left. And the prices have gone up from the pre-construction price for you early bird smart investors. It has gone up uh, probably uh, a substantial already. And it will continue to rise, of course, once the project is completed. So we're here with Anna, and Anna's going to actually talk to somebody else who's joined us. One more guest has joined us, Eva Dionex, a structural engineer from one of the largest East Coast Dominican constructions, companies Novo. Queremos saber, ingeniero, eh, cómo se protegen sus edificaciones para eh, huracanes o cualquier eh, eh, um, tormenta que venga de la naturaleza. Sabe usted que estamos expuestos porque estamos en una costa, eh, porque leyes se rigen, pero me gustaría que usted siendo ingeniero, sea un poco más específico y no los detalle. Ok, eh, tenemos unas, unos reglamentos que están avalados por normas internacionales, que son por normas internacionales y esas normas son las que rigen todos, todas las construcciones de nuestro país. Esas normas especifican eh, cargas para tipo de, de sismo y de tipo de, de viento de huracanes. Eh, depende de la construcción, se toma en consideración qué, qué tipo y por zona de carga puede utilizarse dependiendo siempre de edificación. Eh, regularmente las edificaciones de, que se construyen en este país son de hormigón armado, mampostería, eh, prefabricado se usa un poco, se usa también eh, de estructura de metálica en naves y así. Pero las edificaciones en sí, en el tipo TV o de vivienda, son de regularmente de mampostería y hormigón armado, lo cual se las hace muy pesadas. Y en, en, en cosas de huracanes o en te, esa temporada ciclónica, no, no nos vemos afectados o se pueden, no se pueden ver daños eh, considerables en ninguna edificación. Sí, cabe destacar que veo que este eh, nuevo eh, proyecto que está aquí estuvo eh, antes de que viniera María, o sea, se estaba construyendo y veo que sigue igual, no veo que, que pasó ningún desastre. Exactamente, como tú puedes ver, eh, no hay ningún daño a ninguna edificación que se pueda considerar estructural eh, y casi ni estético, ¿te entiendes? O sea, que... Eh, podemos decir que las construcciones que hay, los materiales que usamos aquí para construcciones 
y los códigos nos ayudan a que todas sean realmente resistentes. Esto también nos da el beneficio porque nuestro país tiene un clima caído el año entero, entonces esas construcciones podemos hacerlas así, en eso, con esos materiales. En otros países sería muy difícil. Cuando Hurricane María was occurring, uh, being a structural engineer, were you concerned at all about all the novel construction sites going up right now, or did you sleep like a baby that night? <laughs> well, nobody slept like a baby, of course, but but were you concerned at all about the structural integrity of the of any of the products or uh, construction sites of Novell? Claro que sí, puedo dormir toda la noche porque. <laughs> Todas las construcciones siempre se mantienen en óptimas condiciones, están sobre, eh, o sea, tienen un nivel de protección muy, muy fuerte y tendría que ser que la madre naturaleza nos castigue con algo demasiado, demasiado grande porque en verdad la madre naturaleza lo puede todo, pero para, los, para todos los, los huracanes y sismos que se han registrado, las construcciones tienen un nivel de seguridad mucho más alto. Muchas gracias, ingeniero, por su aclaración. Así que si usted tenía miedo de venir e invertir aquí, pues ya sabe que aquí nos regimos por, le eh, por leyes y por normas antes de construir. María, how safe are real estate investment with properties under construction? Is it worth investing? Yes, there is an advantage to buying pre-construction or under construction. And that advantage is that you're buying early. And since we've taken the concern and the worry out that we're putting our name behind these developers, so all the people have to worry about then is which one are we going to choose, okay? They have that time, they can spread out to pay it, pay for the property, and so then it's just a matter of which property they're going to choose. So, so pre-construction, your prices are going to be much lower. Those are for the savvy investors. In fact, our savvy investor, investors, they don't buy just one pre-construction property, if they know and they've worked with us and they know the developer and they have that experience with them, they're going to buy two or three or four or they'll buy a whole block of those oh, wow. apart. Yes, yeah, they'll buy a whole block of those condominiums in, in a specific community. So so the construction prices, uh, the prices, not construction price, but the prices are going to be lower when you buy early. As the construction is being completed, of course, the prices go higher. It's all in relation to the market, what the market is calling. In Punta Cana, for example, construction, pre-construction and under construction sells so fast. To be honest with you, uh, sometimes they can just launch it, they can break ground and within two to three weeks all 47 or 50 units are sold already. We don't even have time as a real estate agency to list these on our website because it sometimes takes us that long to get the listing up. So, so it's a really good idea to pay attention to what's going on, what construction, to work with a reliable real estate agency that's going to walk you through the steps. They're going to take photos of the construction progress. They have a project management department that they can help you get that condo all ready and help you inspect it, get the electric meters, get everything in there, your furniture, your decor, all your accessories, your dishes, so that then we can just pass it off to a rental program. You can start making some really good investment income off from that property by renting it to our vacationers. What do you think about the effect of the hurricane season on the local real estate market? Should we wait for the rise or fall? An interesting question and a good question because if you're a savvy investor actually purchasing during the hurricane seasons which are really going to be around July to November that's really going to be the best time to buy the first reason is because you know some people might be afraid to buy during that time the savvy investors know that's when the prices are going to be lower during that time and also because when most people are considering purchasing a property here they're trying to uh, do it at the same time that maybe they're vacationing here and most people come during the high season which is december through say april Uh, well, everybody's here then and the prices are higher then. Everything's higher during high season. But if they come and they buy at lower season, prices actually go lower. You're going to see more of a flat market and a lower price. So savvy investors, if you're smart savvy investor, you're going to want to buy during the months of, say, June to November. Okay, for those reasons, those two reasons. So, today we're learning a lot about Eureka Maria from a very reliable source. 
from Maria the Broker. I hope all your fears are eliminated and you're ready to become a happy house owner in the Dominican Republic. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be on this episode and I look forward to being on many more. Thank you.